Gracias. dass wir in der Klasse sein können, um dein Wort zu studieren. Und danke für die Punkte, die du uns zeigen willst. Hilf uns, dass wir aufmerksam sind und sie verstehen. Und ich bete, dass du Bruder Mark segnest, wenn er all diese Punkte versucht darzulegen. Bitte segne auch die Leute, die zuschauen über den Livestream und danach streben, die Wahrheit zu verstehen. Möge das Studium ein Segen für uns alle sein. Etwas, was uns helfen wird, uns von irdischen Sorgen und Gedanken zu trennen. Dass wir unseren Verstand auf geistliche Dinge und zukünftige Ereignisse setzen können. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this morning. At least beginning this morning, I want to revisit the book of Daniel. Also heute Morgen möchte ich anfangen, das Buch Daniel zu wiederholen. Okay, so in light of um, Matthew 24 and all these parables, I want to go back over these things. Also im Lichte von äh, Matthäus 24 und all den anderen Gleichnissen möchte ich nochmal über diese Punkte äh, okay. übergehen. Okay, so we will begin by looking at Daniel 1, but I want to put a few points in place first. Also wir fangen an, indem wir Daniel 1 betrachten, aber zuerst möchte ich ein paar Punkte an Platz setzen. Go to Isaiah 55. Geht zu Jesaja 55. In Vers 10. In Vers 10. And I made this point a few days ago. Und diesen Punkt habe ich vor ein paar Tagen gemacht. It says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So where are we prophetically? The, the end and the beginning, right? Why, why does Lon say that? Yes, that, that's true, right? Der Regen kommt am Ende und der Samen wird am Anfang gesehen. It says, but water that the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, right? Es sagt, es wässert die Erde und macht es, dass es hervorbringt und sprießt. So, what is that? Was ist das? Yes, but just... That's, that's true, but just from the language there, what what is it? Where would we? No, I'm not asking, but I'm asking. Look, it make it that way. Okay, so what's it referring to? This will be the first step. No, the answer is Matthew 13. Is what it's referring to the parable, right? Right, and 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 which part of the parable? Welcher Teil des Gleichnisses? Come on, guys. Ma Ma Matthew 13 is the. Where, where does it bring forth in bud? Also Matthäus 13, wo bringt es hervor? At the end, right? Priest, das ist am Ende. Not bringing forth in bud at the beginning, right? Er spricht ja nicht hervor ähm, am Anfang. Right, first the, uh, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, right? Zuerst der Halm, dann die Ehre, dann das volle Korn in der Ehre. And when you've got full corn, what do you now have? Wenn man volles Korn hat, was hat man dann? 
you now have the seed, right? Dann hat man den Samen. Okay, so it's a parable that teaches you that in order to go forth and preach the gospel, you must first receive the latter rain, right? You must have fruit. Das, das ähm, lehrt uns, bevor wir vorwärts gehen können, das Evangelium zu predigen, muss man den Spätregen erhalten haben und man muss den Samen haben. And what, once you have fruit, what can you now do? Sobald man Frucht hat, was kann man dann tun? No, you can be the sower, right? Kann man der sein. Okay, and, and then it, verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So it's the culmination of his work, right? Das ist jetzt der and the culmination of God's work is to produce a people that are like Christ, that can following his footsteps. Right? von Gottes Werk ist eben, dass er ein Volk hervorbringen kann, das wie Christus ist und das jetzt den Buchstab von Christi folgen kann. Right? So therefore it's at the end but it's now at the beginning, right? Because you have the sower, right? Es ist am Ende, aber man ist auch am Anfang, weil dort der Seemann ist. Right? So the latter rain pours out, now you have the the sower, right? Der Spätregen wird ausgegossen und dann ähm, ist dort der Seemann. When he says here, but, so this will be the first step from the three steps. Yes. No. You, you're uh, in. But go. You, you, you said play here and full corner of the year. Yes. So it will be the, the three steps. Or not? Mm -mm -mm. The three steps are illustrated one thing. If you go to, uh, go to Ezekiel. Uh, uh, Ezekiel 29. 29, yes. So Ezekiel 29. Das war die Frage über diesen äh, Halm oder diesen Spross. In Vers 20. Vers 20. It says, I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because they wrought for me, saith the Lord of God. So when do you get the land? Wann erhält man das Land? At the end, right? Um, It's the latter rain, right? Ende, das ist dann der In that day I will cause the horn of the house mm -hmm. of Israel to bud forth. Right? It's the same it's the same illustration, right? It's just shown it in a different way. Okay, so when you want to understand so you have to bring them all, all together, right? Okay, right? So we see that the, the rain falls causes you to bud forth and you can now be the sower, right? Wir sehen, der Regen fällt, das macht dann, dass du hervorsprichst und dann kannst du der Seemann sein. Right? Richtig? So, that's not taking away the fact the fact that the former, uh, the latter hand comes at the former and the latter and the beginning and the end of the book, so... We never said that, right? The latter rain falls, we're just, we're just keeping it simple. When the latter rain falls, You now have seed to sow, right? That's the simple principle, right? Wenn der Spätregen fällt, dann hat man Samen zu sehen. Das ist das einfache Prinzip. The latter rain ripens the grain and prepares it for the harvest. Der Spätregen reift das äh, Korn und vorbereitet es für die äh, Ernte. Right? I don't know, maybe I don't have to say so. We don't put any more the three steps in the box, the blade, the football. I don't know why you're saying that. I'm saying that th so this, the, this, the... This No, this illustration is not showing the three steps. You've got to bring them together. I don't know why you're making this point. Diese drei Schritte, Halm, Ehre, volles Korn, Ehre, ist immer noch in der kleinen Box, aber hier ist es eine andere Darstellung. This budding forth here is just illustrating that the plant is ripe, right? Dieses Hervorsprießen stellt einfach nur da, dass die Pflanze eben reif ist. Okay, because if the latter rain falls, It brings the seed to perfection. Okay. You can't have a sower with an unripe plant. Right? Okay, God, God is not contradicting himself, right? But the, but, the, but the latter rain falls right at the end, right? I think the confusion came because you said, uh, according to the parable of Matthew 13, where you have yes. budding... Then no, but it's all at the end. It's 
played here through corner. That's, that's the mother ring. Right. So now you see all at the end, but you show the double box. The double box is the end in this sense. I want it also to. And it's just, I, I, the, the, I, I cannot understand this my mindset. This budding here, right, is the same as, as if it was this. This is where you bud forth, right? This is the Vorsprissen here. It's the same as these three steps. I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm giving you the answer. The ladder rain here in 5510, the ladder rain is falling, right? Mm -hmm. Also here in uh, 55510, there falls the spät rain. Okay, when the ladder rain falls, it ripens the grain. And you can't, you can't be a sower unless the grain's been ripened. So it's all in the, these two verses, mm -hmm. right? When the spät rain falls, then ripens the das, das corn. Und deswegen, du kannst kein Seemann sein, ohne dass äh, das ein reifes Korn gibt. Deswegen. Okay, right, so go to Hebrews chapter 4. Gehen wir zu Hebräer 4. And verse 4. Und Vers 4. It says, For he speak in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Wait, when did he rest? <coughs> yeah, when, when he completed everything, right? Also alles vollendet hat. Yes? Yeah. It says, And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of Unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying, In David today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Right? So the, the rest here is referring to what? No, I mean, that's what it says, but it's... It, where did they enter into? The land. The land was the rest, right? Okay, so the, the Sabbath was pointing to the time where they entered into the land, right? Right, because we know Satan gets bound here, right, for... For spiritually speaking, how long? We wissen, Satan wird hier gebunden, geistig gesprochen, wie lange? A thousand years. A thousand years, which is a type of the Sabbath, right? A thousand years, that is a type of the Sabbath. Right, so here you have the Sabbath, right? Here is the Sabbath. Which is the land. That is the land. What does a sword do? What does a sword do? Yeah, where market? Wo seht ihr? To the land. Exactly. You need you need to have a land in order to sow, right? Du ein land, damit du sehen kannst. Right? Okay. N next point, right? So go to Leviticus 25. Nächster Punkt gehen wir zu 3. Mose 25. In, in verse 2. Vers 2. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye come into the land, which is the Sabbath, right? Also das land ist der Sabbath. When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall ye keep a Sabbath unto me. Right? Richtig. Okay. Six years thou shalt what? Okay, are we making the connections? Six years you have to see it. Making the connections. 
Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years shall thou prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. Okay, so this is connecting this point that this Sabbath in the land, right, is the time where the sower goes forth. Right? Okay, now go to Matthew 25. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Where are we? We're at the same place, right? We're, we're here, right? This is where the going forth of the virgins, right? Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Okay, and so the point is, what is the oil here? Yeah, the, the, the manna, right? Das manna. Okay, because when, when they went into the land, what were they to do? Wenn sie in das Land gingen, was sollten sie tun? Yeah, they gather in manna, right? Okay, and the, the oil is the manna. Das Öl ist das manna. Right? Why are you looking at land? Yes, when they came into the land. And when they left Egypt and went to the wilderness. Yeah, when they left. Yes, but when they left Egypt, was marking the point they were going into the land, right? Als sie Ägypten verlassen haben, gingen sie in die Wüste, aber das markiert eben den Punkt, wenn sie in das Land gehen. Okay. Es gibt um, yeah, zwei verschiedene Illustrationen, aber der Punkt ist, dass sie auf dem Manna getestet wurden. Right? Zwei verschiedene Darstellungen, aber der Punkt ist, sie wurden am Manna geprüft. Okay. So, um, the point is that it says that the Manna tastes like oil. Right? Der Punkt ist, das Manna hat eben wie Öl geschmeckt. Okay, so it says, um, it says, but while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Where does that bring us to? Wohin bringt uns das? Yeah, to, to this point, right? So, they slept. Right? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So, now go to uh, Revelation 13. And verse 11. Verse 11. It says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he speak as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So where are we? Right, same same place, right here. Where God's people are sleeping, right? It says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. What's, what is this? This is this. Verse 13. It's a false letter, right? So right here at the end, right? So here am Ende. You have the, the, the letter ring false, right? Here fällt der Spätring. But right here, you have a Counterfeit, right? Right. 
right? And verse 14. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So when this rain comes down here, what's, what happens? When this rain here runter comes, what happens then? Uh, there's a great deception, right? Okay, so just right under here. Deception. Okay, so go to Matthew 24. And verse 4. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And where was he point where was he standing and where is he pointing to? Wo stand er und worauf hat er hingedeutet? Right, so he, he's standing here. Er stand hier. And he's pointing here, right? Und er hat hierauf hingewiesen. Why, why is he standing here? Warum steht er hier? Who is he? Wer ist er? He's the sword, right? He was tell warning them already what was going to come here, right? Take heed that no man deceive you, right? Right, because remember who is who is Christ? Who is he? Wer ist Christus? No, who, who is the God that we believe in? Sorry? Yeah, he's the Alpha and Omega, right? So, what does he do here at the end? The Mount of Olives. What, just before he gets there, what does he do? Yes, mass the destruction of Jerusalem, right? And mass the close of probation, right? Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem, also das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Sie fragen, wann ist das Ende? Right? And the end is right here. Und das Ende ist hier. And he's, he's pointing them forward to what is just going to repeat. Und er weist sie dann vorwärts zu dem Punkt, wenn es sich nochmal wiederholen wird. In fact, they, they already have all the points there. That tells them when the end's coming, right? Also, da sind schon alle Punkte hier, die ihnen dann sagen, wann das Ende kommt. But remember, he says, "Be not deceived." What were they going to do here? Weil denk daran, ähm, er sagt zu ihnen, werdet nicht verführt, weil was werden sie dann hier tun? The, the okay, they're going to counter. Satan's going to counterfeit the end. Satan right? wird das Ende fälschen. Seven plagues, right? Seven plagues. Which are really here, right? Okay, so he's going to counterfeit this point. Also er wird hier diesen Punkt fälschen. Okay, so you have ladder rain, you have false ladder rain, right? Hier ist der Spätregen, hier ist der falsche Spätregen. Right? So what's Satan going to do here? Was wird Satan hier tun? He's, thank you, right? You just got to look here. He's going to sow, right? Okay, so go to Matthew 13, verse 24. It says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. There's the true sower, right? And then verse 25, it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Right? Are, are we following, guys? Right, so you can see that this... Uh, Hier kann man den Seemann sehen, das ist aber eine Fälschung. Oh, excuse me. 
Right, so you can see now that the, the, the end, they wanted to know when the end was, right? And the Alpha and Omega marks the end, but it's also the beginning, right? Hence you have the latter rain, then the sower, right? And he was pointing them down to the end here, right? And he says, be not deceived because there's a counterfeit going to come here, right? Okay. Now, <laughs> you'll see this. Go to Ezekiel 17. It's important that we really I can't speak for people how they think, but you've got to pray that the Lord opens your mind to these things, right? Okay, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. What is this? Was is this? A parable, right? Okay. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, A great eagle with great wings, long winged, full of feathers, which had diverse colours, came unto Lebanon, and took the highest branch of the cedar. He cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into the land of traffic and set it in a city of merchants. He took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. What is it? Was is das? The true or the counterfeit? Sara oder die Fälschung? It's the true, das right? Das okay. This is Nebuchadnezzar, but he's illustrating the work of Christ, the true sower, right? Where is he sowing them? Literally in history, where is he sowing them? In Babylon, right? Okay, this golden city that was four square, right? Beautiful gardens, right? Okay, but now go to Daniel chapter 1. The exact same point in history. Verse 1. It says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Where are we? Yes, and, and, and why? Yeah, but so is Ezekiel 17. The Anfang der 17. So yeah, not okay. So Nebuchadnezzar here is not representing Christ. He's representing the false king of the north, right? And in Ezekiel 17 is it auch the Anfang der 70 Jahre, but here stellt Nebuchadnezzar nicht den Right, so Nebuchadnezzar in Ezekiel 17, 1, which marks the beginning of the 70 years, he's here as the sower, right? Nebuchadnezzar in Ezekiel 17, Vers 1, markiert es, dass der Anfang der 70 Jahre, da ist er Christus, das markiert es hier. Tells you Nabuch, he enters into covenant with his people there, right? Das sagt dort in dem Buch, dass er dann in einen Bund mit seinem Volk eintritt. Okay, but in Daniel chapter 1, Nebuchadnezzar is this nasty northern king that's bringing God's people into bondage, right? Northern king. Right, he's this counterfeit, right? Right? Context determines what we're looking at, right? Okay. So, 
Daniel chapter 1, we have the beginning point right here, right? Daniel 1, da haben wir jetzt den Anfangspunkt. Okay, and let's go to verse 3. Geht zu Vers 3. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured and skilful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So what do they want to teach them? Was wollen sie in lehren? The Babylonian language, right? Die babylonische Sprache. In verse 5. Vers 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So what do you want to give him? Was wollen sie ihm jetzt geben? What is it? Just say, what does it say there? What does he want to give him? Was sagtest du? Wine. Wine. And flesh, right? And flesh. Okay, go to um, John chapter 6. Go to Johannes 6. And if you go down to verse, verse 53. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is the true sower, right? Das ist der wahre What's he telling you you have to eat? Was sagt er dir, was sollst du essen? Eat my flesh. And drink my blood, right? Lässt mein Fleisch und trinkt mein Blut. Sorry. Also the manna. Yeah, yes, that's the point I'm going to make. So we go up to verse 48. Das ist auch das Manna und gehen wir zu Vers 48 hoch. It says, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread that cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So when you eat his flesh and drink his blood, it's the manna, right? Wenn du sein Fleisch isst und sein Blut trinkst, ist das das Manna. Right? Okay, so right here, the true sower says, eat my flesh and drink my blood, right? And that's illustrated by the bread and the wine, right? Flesh and wine, right? Okay, so, but right here, what's this counterfeit king want to give you? Was möchte dieser gefälschte König dir geben? Yeah, it's the counterfeit. It's flesh and wine, right? But if you eat this wine, or this flesh and this wine, what's absolutely sure? That you will die. He says, because he says here, right? Um, verse 50. This is the bread that cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Right? It's this counterfeit, right? If you eat of this, you will surely die. Right? It's the Tree in the garden, right? Das ist der Baum im garden. Don't eat the fruit of it, right? Ist nicht die Frucht davon. You have to eat the fruit of this tree, right? Das ist die Frucht von diesem Baum essen. Because what tree is this? Welcher Baum ist das? Yeah, it's the tree of life. It's marked at the end. It's the latter rain, right? Das ist der Baum des Lebens. Das ist am Ende markiert. Das ist der Spätrain. So here you have the tree of life. Here you have the tree of Good and evil, right? Hier ist der Baum des Lebens. Hier ist der Baum von Gut und Böse. Okay, don't eat of this tree, right? Esst nicht von diesem Baum. Okay, so uh, we all we all see the true and the counterfeit. Können right? wir alle das Wahre und die Fälschung sehen? So we can all be 
sure that Daniel 1 begins right here, right? And we know that this is the beginning of the 70 years, right? It's just the way it parallels it to them being in captivity for 1260, right? When Christ comes out of the belly, where does he go? Christus aus dem Bauch kommt, wo geht er hin? In the wilderness for how long? Die Wüste, wie lange? Sorry? No, when Christ comes out of the belly, where does he go? Wenn Christus aus dem Bauch kommt, wohin geht er? Different illustration. Das ist eine andere Darstellung. Where does he come out of the belly? Wo kommt er aus dem Bauch? Yes, in Revelation 11, uh, 12, sorry, right? He goes into the wilderness for three and a half years, right? Which is 1260, right? And this is where Ezekiel 17 plants them there for 70 years, right? So you have the true... And you have the counterfeit, right? Also das wahre und man hat die Fälschung. Everybody see that, right? Kann das jeder sehen? Okay, so go go now to Daniel one. Gehen wir jetzt zu Daniel eins. In verse twelve. In verse twelve. <coughs> so the parables, they they all begin here, and where is the Lord? Want to take you to. Die Gleichnisse fangen alle hier an und wo möchte der Herr dich hinbringen? To the end, right? Zum Ende. Okay, and this is what we really need to understand in, in the book of Daniel. Where, where are all these illustrations leading us down to? Right? Das müssen wir wirklich verstehen im Buch Daniel. Wohin führen uns all diese Darstellungen? Okay, Vers 12. Vers 12. It says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. And let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. So we need to identify now where where are these ten days. Right? Okay. Go to Revelation chapter 2. Verse 10. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. What are you going to do? Suffer. Right? Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life, right? So, okay, so we, we understand that this, I mean, at least I would understand this, 10 days, we point to this, right? Where you're going to get delivered up, right? It's marking prison and also death. Right? Das Gefängnis und auch den Tod. That's what we've been looking at, right? Das hatten wir uns ja angeschaut. That if I just go to, I think it's in Matthew 10. Also Matthäus 10. Your place in. says, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought 
or how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Right? So, um, I'm trying to remember where it is. It talks about this. Um, so, look at 18, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember where it says that um, your brother hath out against you. Maybe it's Matthew 18, actually. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 25. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Because, okay, in Luke, Luke 18, when she gets delivered before the magistrate, who is she asking to be delivered from? Also in Lukas 18, wo sie vor diesen ähm, Richter ausgeliefert wird, wovon bittet sie, dass sie befreit wird? From their adversary, right? Which is the devil, right? So we just read that the devil shall cast some of you into prison, right? Okay, if we go to verse uh, 25 here in Matthew 5. It says, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Right? So this prison, and also this death experience, are, they're marking this, this time of suffering. Right? Diese Gefängnis und Todeserfahrung, das markiert eben diese Zeit des Leidens. Okay, where you're going to be tried. Right? Wo geprüft werden. And in Daniel chapter 1, he's saying, prove or try thy servants ten days. Right? Now it says in Revelation 2 that if, you, if you're faithful unto death, you receive a crown of life. Right? Okay, just keep that in mind. Go back to Daniel 1. And verse 13. It says, Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. So at the end of the ten days, what's he going to do? Am Ende der zehn Tage, was wird er tun? He's going to look at your yes. countenance, right? Er wird sich dein Angesicht anschauen. And the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days their countenance appeared, fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus... Meltzer took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. So he takes something from them and gives them something, right? So when you go to Zechariah chapter 3, and verse 3, verse 3, this is also at the end of this little box. This right? is auch am Ende von dieser kleinen Box. Okay. Verse 3. Verse 3. It says, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Why has he got filthy garments on? Warum hat er schmutzige Gewänder an? Because all the accusations that were heaped upon him, right? Wegen all diesen Anklagen, die über, auf ihn gehäuft wurden. And stood before the angel and answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. So what's he doing? Was macht er? He's taking away that's what's filthy, right? Er nimmt das weg, was ist. And he said unto him, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass on thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. So he takes away something and he 
gives him something, right? So in Daniel chapter 1, he takes away that which is unclean and he gives him something that is clean. Right? Takes away his dirty garment and gives him a clean garment. Right? And then what does he do? Verse 5. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. What's he now getting on his head? A crown of life, right? So you can see he, he represents somebody that endured to the end and then received this crown, right? Man kann also sehen, er stellt jemanden da, der bis zum Ende ausgehalten hat und dann erhält er die Krone. Okay, so you can see that Zechariah 3 to, down to 5, it's the same point where they're standing before Melzer at the end, right? Right, and they're both marking this point where they receive this crown of life, right? And verse, back to Daniel 1, verse 17. And it says, And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So what are they receiving right there? It's the latter rain, right? So you can see how this is the same point again, right? Right? Latter rain is, is the deep understanding of God's word, right? Where you're filled with God's spirit. Okay, so on that thought, go to Matthew, keep your place in Daniel 1, go to Matthew 22. So when they were, when they were taken into captivity here, they were to be there for three years, right? And if you go to the time of Christ, from temple cleansing to temple cleansing was how many years? Three years. Three years, right? It says, so, as soon as the investigative, investigative judgment is finished, right? Weil das Untersuchungsgericht zu Ende ist. What does Christ do? Was macht Christus? Yes, he comes out and he changes his garments and puts on his kingly robes, right? Das ist die finale Untersuchung und er kommt heraus, verändert dann oder wechselt seine Gewänder und zieht diese königlichen Gewänder. Okay, so I want to say that Melzar and in Nebuchadnezzar, they're both representing Christ, but in two different um, roles, right? Okay, Melzar is dealing with the investigative judgment. Nebuchadnezzar is dealing with the final review when he comes as king, right? Okay, Matthew 22, verse 11. It says, And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So when he comes in, what's he looking to see what they have on? A wedding garment, right? In Zechariah, did they clothe them with a garment? Yes, when they put the crown on his head, right? Okay, so it's now this point. Once the investigative judgment is finished, you can now be, you know, able to stand before the king, right? Okay, so go back to Daniel 1, verse 18. It says, Now at the end of the days that the king had said, he should bring them in. Then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before 
Nebuchadnezzar, right? So there was three years he was to feed them that they might stand before the king, right? And the king communed with him. So what's the king now doing? Was macht jetzt der König? Yeah, he's speaking to them, right? In Matthew 22, when he comes, the king, what does he do? Yeah, he's asking them questions, right? Yeah, Matthew 25, yes, the parable of the talents, right? It's the same illustration, right? Also? No, Matthew 25. Okay, the verse, you go back to Daniel 1, verse 19. Daniel 1, verse 19. He just says to him, How camest thou not in without a wedding garment? The question. He, he, yes, but anyway, go, go to also, Daniel 1, and verse 19. Aber gehen wir jetzt zu Daniel 1, verse 19. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. So where are they? What are they doing? Was sie? They're standing before the king. Sie right? stehen vor dem König. It says, in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And if you just go... Go, go to Luke 19. Geht zu Lukas 19. Remember this point. <laughs> Verse 12, because this is a parallel to Matthew 22, Matthew 25. Verse 12, weil das ist eine Parallele zu Matthäus 25 und 22. It says, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. So this is the talents, right? Das sind die Talente. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, he commanded these servants to be called unto him. This is where Daniel in that is now, right? Ist jetzt in Vers 15, wo Daniel und die anderen sind. To whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. How many? Wie viel? Ten, right? Zehn. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little. What was he? Was faithful, right? Have thou authority over ten cities, right? That's marking this point where you receive the kingdom, which is represented by these ten cities, right? Okay, it's just here. So you, enter, you receive the ladder ring, you enter into the land, right? The land is represented by these Ten cities or ten nations, das right? Land wird durch diese zehn Städte, diese zehn Nationen dargestellt. And Nebuchadnezzar, when they're standing before Nebuchadnezzar, he finds them ten times better, right? Also von Nebuchadnezzar stehen, da findet er sie zehnmal besser. What does Sister White say this is? Was sagt ein White ist das? Yeah, the latter rain is coming as the midnight cry with ten times the power, right? Okay, the latter rain and the land, they're the same thing, right? Right? Okay, right? Sorry? Okay, you're referring to Daniel. I wasn't sure yes. you to, to, to Daniel, right? Yes. Uh, go, go to uh, Revelation 6 and verse 17. Also, da steht in Vers 17. 
Vers 20 das Thema besser sind, gehen wir jetzt zur Offenbarung 6. When he pours the ladarin out, that's the blessing, right? Offenbarung 6, Vers 17. Und wenn er den Spätigen ausgießt, ist es der Segen. And at the same time, it's also the curse. The curse, right? Zur selben Zeit ist es auch der Fluch. Okay, Revelation 6 and Vers 17 says, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to Stand before the king, right? Okay, so I hope you can see this point from Daniel chapter 1, right? Right, so go, we'll just, let's begin here, but we'll take these thoughts, finish these thoughts tomorrow, but if you just go to Genesis um, chapter um, 39. Also, gehen wir zu 1. Mose 39. Wenn jetzt hier anfangen, morgen dann mit noch weiter machen. Okay, let's just And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, uh, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand, and Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand. Right? Um, so, where would he be prophetically? Wo wäre er prophetisch? Why are you saying, why are you saying at the end? He's, he's in the land now, so where is he? Yes, in the land, who is he? He just received the ten cities. That's the end, right? Yes. When, when you, when, okay, but what I'm saying, he's now the overseer, he's in the land, he's overseeing all his masters, so where is he? He's at the beginning, right? He's at the beginning, right? Is after he's is after he's received it, right? Nachdem er es erhalten hat. So he, jo Joseph is like a, Joseph is a type of Christ, right? Joseph is ein Typus für Christus. Joseph is this one that's been set over all the land of Egypt in in a in a certain parallel sense, right? Joseph is derjenige, der über das ganze Land Ägypten gesetzt wurde im gewissen Sinne. Okay, in verse five. Vers 5. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not out he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and, and well favoured. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what is not, what is with me in the house? And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. So where are we now? At the Sunday law, right? This woman has now come as this to begin this time of temptation, right? It says, There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Okay, so, and then, She entices him day after day, right? Dann versucht sie ihn zu verführen, Tag um Tag. Okay, so, and, um, and go down to verse 12. Geht jetzt zu Vers 12. It says, and she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. 
and he left his garment in her hand and fled. Right? So, <clears throat> um, where, where would we put this now? Wo würden wir das jetzt hinsetzen? Was, something has been what? Wird taken, taken from him, right? But is it the true or the counterfeit? Aber ist es das wahre oder die Fälsch? It's, so it, it's, this would be at the beginning, right? Die Fälschung, das wäre am Anfang. He's losing this garment, right? He's having it taken from him, er right? Er verliert jetzt das Gewand, ihm wird das weggenommen. What did they do with Christ's garment? Was haben sie mit Christi Gewand getan? They took it off of him and put a scarlet robe on him, which is the sin, color of sin, right? So they did the same with Christ. They took away his righteous garment and gave him an unrighteous garment, right? Okay, but he fled. Where did he now flee to? Aber er ist geflohen. Wohin ist er geflohen? To Christ, right? Zu Christus. So you can see, just based upon this, it's right, right at the beginning, right? Das ist darauf, um, deswegen sehen, dass es hier am Anfang ist. Now, the, the, sorry, Lons, the, the ten days trial, what did it see would happen to you? Was stand in den zehn Tagen der Prüfung, was würde mit dir geschehen? Okay, put in prison and be thou faithful unto yeah. Death and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay. Well, Gefängnis geworfen wird und er soll treu bis auf den Tod sein und dann wird er eine Krone des Lebens erhalten. What were you going to say? And he has a quote in the study Bible. I can just read. Maybe you. Yes, one sentence, one last sentence. Es gibt ein Zitat in der Studienbibel, da können wir einen Satz davon lesen. Says the welfare of his entire future is suspended upon the decision of the moment. Joseph calmly casts his eyes to. Uh, to heaven for help, so he's, he's looking up. Okay, nice. Also here steht eben, dass um, seine ganze Zukunft war, wo, wurde auf, um, die Entscheidung eines Moments um, gehängt und Josef hat dann also ruhig aufgeblickt oder seine Augen emporgehoben für Hilfe. Also okay. er schaut auf. Okay, so go, go to verse uh, uh, 14. Gehen wir jetzt zu Vers 14. It says that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. So now she's his accuser. Right? Sie sein she's casting all these filthy garments upon him. Sie wirft all die schmutzigen Gewänder auf ihn. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with thee and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant, which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with thee and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. So what, what did he do to him? Was hat er mit ihm getan? He bound him and threw him into the prison, right? Hat ihn gefunden und ins Gefängnis geworfen. Now, if you read what Sister White says, Potiphar... Did he, did he think that Joseph was guilty? Wenn man liest, was Ellen White sagt, um, hat Potiphar gedacht, dass Josef schuldig war? No, he knew that he was innocent, like right? Pilate. Nein, er wusste, like Pilate, er, exactly, er right? Wusste, dass er, um, unschuldig war, so wie Pilatus. So, what are they making Joseph right here? Was haben sie also mit Joseph yes, gemacht? the scapegoat, right? Sie haben ihn zu einem Sündenbock gemacht. They knew that he was innocent, yet they still delivered him up, right? Sie wussten, dass er unschuldig ist, aber sie haben ihn trotzdem ausgeliefert. He did it just to protect his own name, right? Because of his didn't want everybody knowing that his wife was like this, right? Er hat das nur gemacht, um seinen eigenen Namen zu schützen. Er wollte nicht, dass jeder weiß, dass seine Frau so war. Okay. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. 
And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So even when he gets cast into this prison, the Lord blesses him, right? So, when he gets into the prison, the Lord him. Okay, so we're going to close on that thought, right? Mit wir and tomorrow when we come back, we'll try to understand where we should uh, place this. Do we place it, although, although it's the same experience, because do we place it under this experience or do we place it under this one, right? Okay, that's what... We need to understand, right? Das müssen wir verstehen. Okay, so because we need to understand Genesis uh, 39, 40, 41. Once we understand those, then we will help us to understand Daniel chapter 2, right? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's close. Father in heaven, we thank you for these illustrations that you are showing us. Help us that we would continue to grasp this connection. And please strengthen us in our faith, Lord. And help us that auch wir wie Joseph in allen Details and auch wenn Große Folgen und Anschuldigungen auf uns kommen. And help us that we would be faithful um, to you in all things, even though um, accusations and um, persecutions will come upon us. Und stärke uns, Herr, dass wir uns vorbereiten für die Prüfungszeiten, die kommen. And strengthen us that we would be prepared for the um, time of trial. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.